Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship service. And just to remind you, this service is pre-recorded. It is not a live stream. And we use some video from choir performances in the past where they're vested and of course, they're not wearing a mask. Currently, there are no in-person services at the church. But please remember, as with many offices these days and businesses, if you were to go into the church for any reason, it is required that you wear a mask. And we proudly wear our masks as an act of love to protect ourselves and to protect others. As we continue to develop our virtual ministries here at Trinity, we want to make sure and invite you today to a virtual coffee hour following the service. Uh, all you have to do to join us for that coffee hour, if you already have the Zoom app on your computer or smartphone, uh, that's wonderful. If not, you can download it for free. Uh, and you just can click on trinityzoom.org uh, on our Trinity website to uh, join us for coffee hour. And that will be the same um, platform that we'll be using for forums that start this morning. So if you go to coffee hour uh, at 11 o'clock, let's say, or right in there, quarter to 11, then you'll be able to stay right there uh, and it'll go right into the forum. And so you can join us for the forum between 11.30 and 12.30. The forum today is, uh, I'm going to be doing the forum and hope, uh, and joined by a couple of panel members. And what we're gonna talk about is how we of Trinity uh, have been dealing with uh, life in the church during this whole pandemic. So uh, I hope you'll join us and then you can have questions and we can have interactions. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, next Sunday, Jason Garner is gonna be joining us at the forum. Um, and he's going to be talking about Broome County's response to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and we'll be able to ask Jason some uh, questions. Those are always fun, aren't they? <laughs> They're always enjoyable. So I hope you can jo join us for the forums. Uh, it's, they're going to be very, very, uh, very um, informative, I think. And if you want to consider sending us a short video that we can use during the service, it's a form of passing the peace. So uh, there are instructions on that on the website as well. And finally, I have to commend you on your faithfulness and continuing to financially support the church and its ministries during this time. I just want to thank you for your generosity. And I know the vestry and wardens would join me in thanking you. You've made life so much easier because of your faithfulness. And that's wonderful. And if you need to reach us this week, you simply call the church number and leave a message or send an email. And don't forget to check out the website. It's got all kinds of information on it these days. And also to check out our Facebook page because every day there's an encouraging meditation uh, that you can read and use as part of your devotion. And as always, we hope you'll feel free to follow along with the liturgy at home. Say the responses, sing the hymns as loud as you want, and include your prayers and intercessions along with ours. And as our bishop says, the church is open, although the building is closed. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the selfishness that enslaves us, the self-centered acts we have done, and those done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and the consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open our lips. 
and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. If you would please join me as we say together the Vanity, the Invitatory Psalm. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses, and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. Our first lesson is from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers, and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then the brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little children. And this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. If you would please join with me as we read together the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord 
and he will have compassion and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prop prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not dis despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day Observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be
The third reading is from Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began to reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell down on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me. He would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what happened, they were greatly distressed and they went out and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay the entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Genesis reading about Joseph and his brothers reconciling and weeping together. Joseph forgives his brothers who sold him into slavery and then the brothers rejoiced in this reconciliation after the death of their father. Forgiveness and reconciliation leads to unity. You find a little light in the darkness. There's a little hope in the shadow of life when God is in our midst. Now, I know there are, there are many families who have experienced this kind of reconciliation within their family. And there are also families who bear the pain of just not being able to reconcile. Now in Romans, Paul is trying to put together some congregations. He's trying to encourage some mutual care and concern for different congregations that exist in Rome during that time. You see some of them uh, adhere to Sabbath or to the Sabbath law. And so they consider one day as holy above another, you see, as Paul was talking about. Others see every day as being just alike. Some are kosher and some are not kosher. Yet there's something larger is Paul's point. There's something larger that binds them together beyond following their family or their congregation or even their earlier faith traditions. There's a larger tapestry God is weaving and a larger reality that we as Christians are all a part of. It's really a very challenging uh, way to live out the reality of our lives. And Paul sums this up by saying some words that we are very, very familiar with. You know where you remember these words. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. Or if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. You remember that from the burial office, don't you? We hear that all the time when people are buried. Paul continues, for to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. 
Wow. As you look at that phrase, there's a larger reality here. There's a larger tapestry that's being formed as God is living, as God is continuing his creation. Now, one of the things that this connects us into is the community of saints. We talk about that at funerals all the time that there's a connection between those who have died, who we often call the saints triumphant, and those that are still on this side of the divide. And that is, we call those folks the saints militant. I don't like that terminology at all, but that's what we call them. And last Sunday in the gospel lesson, we heard those very familiar words of Jesus, that where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be in the midst of them. Now, we're really familiar with those words because we use them in morning prayer all the time when we say the prayer of St. Chrysostom. If two or three are gathered together uh, in my name, that Jesus is there. And one of the things that we need to understand, and you get this in the burial office very clearly, is that just because a person has died and they're in the saints triumphant, they're not separated from those of us in the saints militant. There's a bigger picture. There's a bigger connection than even death itself. Now, let me ask you something. Can two or three gather together online and have Jesus in the midst of a virtual gathering? That's an interesting question, isn't it? In whatever form we gather, whether it's for a vestry meeting, or whether it's for coffee, when two or three are there in Jesus' name, Jesus is in the midst of them. If God's spirit can span the divide between the acrimony of Joseph and his brothers, if God's spirit can span the divide between the various traditions of the congregation in Rome that Paul's talking about, then God's spirit can be in the midst of us even when we're gathered together virtually instead of physically. The point is we don't need a single place to gather to experience the presence of the spirit of God. It exists in our mutual love for Jesus and one another. If we believe Jesus' presence is with us, then this gives us a bit of hope in our current existence. People can draw strength from that as they recognize that the indwelling of the Spirit of God and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding is with them where they are, even at home. The holy place of God is not just in the sanctuary of any church building. It is in every place that the faithful are celebrating the presence of God in their midst. We are united one to another in brotherly or familial love. And it matters to us how a person is doing, whether we're present with them or we just hear about their difficulties, right? We hear their names in the prayers of the people and we say, oh, what happened to so-and-so? We, I didn't realize they were sick. So we pray, we reach out, we love, and most importantly, we forgive. Because the forgiveness is the very hallmark of a Christian. Now, that leads us to the gospel lesson this morning. That was all kind of just a warm-up, you see. Didn't the gospel lesson sound awfully harsh to you? In anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. And so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Now, back off of the language for a minute and look at the point Jesus is trying to make. The point's very clear, that we should forgive others as we have been forgiven. It's just like the Lord taught us to pray. Forgive us our debts or trespasses as we forgive those who are indebted to us or who have trespassed against us. And Jesus is trying to highlight the seriousness of this issue when he says that if we don't forgive others 
as we have been forgiven by God, then we put ourselves in a spiritually risky and unhealthy situation. You notice I said, if we do not forgive others as we have been forgiven, the only one who can forgive is the one who's been injured. The only one who can forgive is the one who has been injured. You know, one of the phrases we often use is holding a grudge against someone, right? The word hold is paramount here. It takes intentionality on all par our part to hold something. And if you don't continue to hold on to something and instead let it go, it's out of your control. So letting go of a grudge or forgiving is our act of faith to let God do what God is going to do without us trying to control the outcome. That's what forgiveness is. In the recovery communities, our slogan is let go and let God. Let God do what God's going to do. It's none of our business. What our business is, is to be able to let go of that resentment because as alcoholics or addicts, we know how perilous, how absolutely perilous it is to our recovery in our life is we, if we let those resentments we have against people build up. Forgiveness means that an injury is not a barrier to a relationship. Just as with Joseph and his brothers and just as with the Christian congregations in Rome that Paul's talking about. Now, before I end, I want to point out another major misunderstanding about forgiveness, because I think this is really, really important. We do not forgive and forget, as the old adage goes. Forgiving and forgetting leads even Christians to be doormats, and we wrongly then put up with all kinds of abusive behavior. We don't forgive and forget. We forgive even though we remember. You see, forgiveness is our conscious choice. We openly acknowledge the wrong done to us. We just choose to let the person back in the human race. They're humans. We don't forget the wrong. We don't trust the person and say, oh yeah, I'll just go ahead and trust that person all over again. That's not what we do. Let the person earn their trust or, or however that's going to happen but it doesn't break the relationship with us, with, with each other, if in fact we are willing, if in fact we are willing to forgive. Now, let me ask you a question. How many times has God let you and let me back in the human race when we've missed the mark, when we've sinned? How many times? Seven? <laughs> 77, how many times? Just remember, when I have one finger pointed at you, I have three pointed back at myself. <laughs> I remember that. And I remember the fact that, you know, I have to be able to let go and let God because God has forgiven me. God has done that with me. I used to have a let go and let God box. It was this wonderfully decorated box. And what I would do is if I had a resentment against somebody, I would write down what the resentment was. I'd fold it up on a piece of paper and put it in the box. And I'd leave it there. I'd leave it there. Years later, I went back and I looked in that box and I thought, I don't even remember this stuff. I don't even remember why it was so upsetting to me. So it wasn't that I forgot it. Um, that I wanted to forget it is that I forgot it naturally. Now, maybe my memory's going. I don't know about you. My memory isn't what it used to be. But it's the fact that I let it go. You know, couples have disagreements all the time. They have mutual disagreements. And there was a couple that uh, were her of disagreements. And so what they decided to do is they decided to make a fault box and they put it in the middle of their dining room table. And every day, what they would do is they'd take a piece of paper, and if they found daily irritation that their spouse was doing, they'd write it on the fault, on the, on the paper, and they'd put it in the fault box. 
the wife was very diligent in her efforts. <laughs> You know, he left the towel on the floor. He didn't put the toilet seat down. I mean, the list went on and on and on. And then what they did is at the end of the month, they would open the box and they would read the faults of one another so that they were on clear understanding in their relationship, how they felt about each other. Well, the husband didn't exactly write down the faults like the wife did. They opened the box. The wife had all kinds of things listed that irritated her. And when they came to the husband's pieces of paper, every time she opened the paper, it just read the same thing. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Yes, that's how you are. We don't always agree, but I love you. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he arose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the people. Almighty and most merciful Father, you have called us to be your people through the grace of Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and strengthen us on the journey you have set before us in this world. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. We pray that you will lead and inspire Michael, our presiding bishop, and Dee Dee, our bishop, Glenn, our priest, and all lay ministers of this congregation that we will work together to meet the spiritual needs of your people. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only, only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us, guide us in the way of justice and truth. We pray for those who hold authority in our country, in our state, and in our community. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. O Lord, let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. We pray especially for those in our parish, Terry, Paul and Joe May, Danielle, Brenda, Jacqueline, Karen, Linda, Ida, Anusha, Rudy, Linda, Bill, John, Don, Ralph, Nancy, Christine, Nancy, Suzanne, Patricia, Joe, Larry, Betsy, Robert, Andrew and Mary, Virginia and Joe Jr. Are there others? This is my prayer. This is our prayer. 
Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for those who are celebrating birthdays this week. Joe, Andrew, and Ivan, and anniversaries, Byron and Melissa, David and Darlene. Are there others? This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Rest eternal grant to those who have gone through the portal of death and become a part of your saints triumphant. Remember especially Marcia and Frida English, Levi and Lou, Louise English, Stuart English, Phoebe English Helfer, Virginia English, Elizabeth E. Larkin. Are there others? Let light perpetual shine upon them, O Lord. And may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, the mercy of God, rest in peace. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that may we walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they were created and have their being.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, in you we live and move and have our being. We pray today for those in our world who have been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. We pray you would surround the sick with a sense of your presence. We pray you would give strength and peace to those who struggle mentally or financially. We pray for those who treat individuals infected with COVID-19, that you would keep them safe from contracting the virus themselves. Finally, we ask for the scientists and the researchers developing treatments that you would give them wisdom in their tasks and that their efforts would be productive. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Wake me up, Lord, so that the evil of racism finds no home within me. Keep watch over my heart, Lord, and remove from me any barriers to your grace that may oppress and offend my brothers and sisters. Fill my spirit, Lord, so that I may give services of justice and peace. Clear my mind, Lord, and use it for your glory. And finally, remind us, Lord, that you said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Amen. O oh God, for whom all holy desired, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be, be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of all enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created all things, and in love you have fashioned the human family in a variety of races, languages, and cultures. Do not let our diversity divide us, but help us to welcome gifts we can give and receive from one another. Save us from prejudice arrogance and fear, and teach us how to live together 
as members of one family sharing one home and the children of one God. Amen. And would you join me as we pray together at the general thanksgiving? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And also, if you would please join me in the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.